Welcome, everybody. My name is Mike Martin. Welcome to another Casio Artist Spotlight. We have a great guest coming up. But first, I want to introduce my co-host, as usual, joining me from 820 miles to my east, Mr. Rich Formadoni. How are you doing today, Rich? Hey, everybody. Doing good here in Hoboken, New Jersey. We are locked down in quarantine, but we are still finding ways to have fun and be musical. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Well, we have a great guest today. Uh, she's an acclaimed jazz pianist, music educator, and writer whose creativity and passion has touched the lives of thousands. She's performed in prestigious venues around the world and holds a doctorate in music education from Indiana University, where she's also a faculty member. She's also written books about David Barker and Chick Corea. And with her latest project, Shiro's and Eternal Dance, she empowers women in jazz with stellar performances from an all-female ensemble. Since she discovered Casio, she's been recording and touring with Privia Pianos. Welcome to the broadcast, Monica Herzig. Hi, Monica. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm right in between the two of you in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, thank you for joining us as well. My Hello. husband, Peter Keenley. <laughs> Very, very talented guitarist and a member of the Time Flies. So, uh, Monica, we wanted to get started just by asking you a little bit about your uh, your musical influences. When you were growing up, who were the musicians who first really influenced your playing or made you want to start playing? Um, <laughs> this one. <laughs> ah, Chick Corea. <laughs> and, you know... Um, He's just, yeah, it's, it's just one of the first things I saw him. And then I saw a weather report, <laughs> mm. which, which was another influence. And then Carla Blay waving her hair and playing the organ in front of the big band. And those were some of the ones that drew me into this music. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Germany and um, that was some of the things I saw first. I saw Carla at a festival in Austria in the 80s. It was really impressive. And and then this guy asked me to play in his band, and it was this <laughs> fusion band and, and had all the Return to Forever, John McLaughlin, Weather Report kind of things, and then I had to work my way backwards from that. Mm. Did you have other musicians in the family? Um, not really. You know, my parents came out of the war period. They did not really have the luxury of um, going into it. But my mom was a, a elementary school teacher and always concerned that all of the children learn an instrument. And um, I also learned the church organ and our church organist really took me in and, and mentored me at the time. Oh, great. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your journey together from Germany to the USA? What made you want to come over? Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was a, it was an opportunity. Um, I finished my undergrad in, in, in Germany, and they had an exchange program that was usually given to the English majors. And I persuaded them. I told them I really, really, really need this because I need to go where they play jazz. <laughs> and and I got this exchange. Um, program opportunity and, and we went ahead and, and bought one-way tickets to make sure we're going to make this oh, work. Good. So mm -hmm. we're still here. <laughs> That's awesome. We're, we're very glad you are. Um, in the 90s, you played with Beeblebrox. And uh, I just have to ask, is, is the name a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference? <laughs> Here's the science fiction God. There you go. <laughs> Kindred spirit. <laughs> Who's into it? Yes, yes. This is the one that has two heads, right? Right, exactly. The box, he steals the spaceship and it's like <laughs> and yes. <laughs> he, was a real, he was a real hoopy fruit. Uh, do you remember any memorable shows from those days? I know you opened up for like Tower of Power and some, some real heavy hitters. Any highlights stand out? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Yes. Join yeah, in, Peter. Sure. You're welcome. Please. <laughs> yeah, please. Yes, the group. Yes. <laughs> oh, the group. Yes. The oh. Group, oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Took us a second. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> that, that was pretty mind-boggling. We were lucky. There, there's a big um, uh, 
outdoor venue up in Indianapolis. And it was built locally initially. And so um, the guy who ran it initially, he always paired up regional groups with those acts that came through, you know, and it was Santana and Yes and oof, I oh, don't wow. know. And, all uh, great, great people, and and it was a wonderful opportunity, and it went wonderfully until all these venues got bought up by the big companies. <laughs> mm. It's when they all lost their names and became right. uh, uh, corporations. One name, <laughs> right? Well, you've played in so many different prestigious venues throughout uh, throughout the world, really, and uh, and we wanted to talk about your your current projects in a little bit, but um. We also wanted to talk a little bit about you being a music educator and an author. You were holding up one of your books before. That was uh, Chick yeah. Corea, A Listener's Companion. Yeah, I've actually got it up here on the screen right now. Oh, so very nice. So can see it. And uh, where can people go to get a copy of this? Oh, any of your favorite outlets. Um, it's, uh, yeah, Amazon, I'm sure, and all the outlets. It's it's a, a Roman and Littlefield book. So... Just Google experiencing Chikoria. And there's, uh, oh, experiencing Chikoria, listener's companion, my fault. Yep. Uh, there's another book as well, David Barker, A Legacy in Music. Um, I wanted to ask, what drew you in to start writing about those two specific musicians? What is it about their music that, uh, that inspired you? It's, it's David Baker. And, and David Baker. What um, did I say? Oops. Barker. Barker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. I know a guy named David Barker. David Baker, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's okay. So David Baker, that's a really special legacy because um, him, David Baker, you know, the ABCs of jazz education is Jamie Abersold, David Baker, and Jerry Coker. And they were all together here at Indiana University at one point, and they are all from Indiana. So there's a really strong legacy in how this whole jazz education programs, movement, all materials got coined that is rooted here. And, and David was the head of the program here for 50 years. He passed away a few years ago. And so I went through his program and um, what he did when he started teaching, Jamie Abersole developed all the play-along programs. Uh, I'm sure you know the want to, I want to, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and made a, a entrepreneurial legacy out of the materials. And then Jerry Coker was the one who started writing some of the initial methods and then uh, started the program down in Miami. And so their legacy uh, is, is just really, really crucial for how we all can have access to jazz, you know, without them. It wouldn't be possible that anywhere in the world you pretty much learn this language in a really, really great way that works. Hmm. Wow. And of course, Chikoria, you know, is Chikoria. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we actually share a birthday, which I'm really proud oh, of. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Very cool. And, and right now, he's, he's going live every day in late evening or early evening for an hour, and it's really, really special to see. Highly. There, well, one of he, our uh, one of our friends. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Well, I say I was just going to say, but you've been going live quite a bit with with Peter as well. We we have our Wednesday and Saturday rotation <laughs> because you know, well, you know, everything has been canceled. I mean, I just got a note this morning from the Vienna Jazz Festival that was still holding on. For July and May just canceled, and wow. uh, it, it it keeps moving up and moving up, and it's 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 terrible. I mean, we were in the middle of our CD release tour for for Eternal Dance, and we had to turn around and, and go back home. Yeah. Since then, it's just you know we don't know what's going to happen. So it was well, interesting. I was going to say we're we're watching the the chat coming in from YouTube, and so somebody just asked, you know, have you been watching Chick's live performances on 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 Facebook? And, and every day, <laughs> you you beat us to it. So there we go. There you go, Joe. <laughs> Thanks for joining, everybody. Yeah, uh, we. Oh, somebody else is asking, what's your favorite Casio? Well, I'm the <laughs> owner of two. <laughs> <laughs> 
or prove yeah. <laughs> and, and I have to say both of them. I I just really, really they they saved my life. I mean, A, I can carry them fully. <laughs> <laughs> The sound is great um, with both of them. And this one, actually, I'm using right now a lot because for the church services, I have to put these hymns together, right? right. Mm. And so I, I put the organ and then the piano on top, and I'll sing and put the beat on. And oh, fantastic. It, yeah. Yeah, that's the <laughs> PX560 there for anybody that's, that's wondering. That's that awesome. One of my favorites as well. So, Monica, I was wondering, uh, you got your doctorate from University of Indiana. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, what, can, tell us about your role there at the school. It's Indiana University. Oh. <laughs> and that's all right. And um, so I, I actually teach for the arts management program there. It's, it's a pretty new program. And I teach courses on the music industry and arts entrepreneurship and programming. So it's uh, a lot about how to put things together, how all these um, parts interact in the industry, you know, what's the management's role in the labels. And it's actually interesting. This week, our topic is retail. <laughs> oh, wow. So we, we were just going through, you know, the important role of, of instrument retail and what makes it work. and. And the importance for back for education, you know, interfacing with the schools and providing the music and the materials needed. Wow, amazing. And I was also wondering, you know, obviously universities and schools around the world are, are dealing with this kind of situation. I mean, can you give any advice to musicians that are home or students that are at home during this time? Well, I mean, it's it's... It's been really difficult because, you know, our classes, everything has been canceled. So I had to move everything online and, and figure out how to, how to create a meaningful interaction. And, you know, obviously it depends on the type of classes that you're teaching. Right. For me, it sort of works, you know, because I can put materials and, and create lectures and, and have them um, do assignments. But everything that needs the one-on-one -on -one interaction, I teach a few students through um, online. It's it's working, but I hope it's not a long-term solution. <laughs> right. Mm, yeah. Hey, I'm noticing that that Peter's looking a little impatient there. Should we should we get him involved and maybe hear a little music if you're up for it? That sounds great. <laughs> we can do some music. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've been, we've been talking so much about Chick Corea, I should think we should play some chic music. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. 
Okay. <laughs> well, Great stuff, guys. So we are lost. It's been so long. <laughs> well, <laughs> virtual applause from from all over the world. Lots of thumbs up and and hearts coming from Facebook and and YouTube. <laughs> yep, some nice compliments in the chats. That's great stuff. Thank you very much, guys. That yeah. sounded great. Yeah, I appreciate everybody sticking with us. It's the, the limitations of, of Skype conferencing and all of this all at the same time. So, But but sounds great, Monica. Thank you. You too, yeah. Peter. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Killer solo. going to change um, guitars while we talk more. <laughs> Yes, yeah, and it limits how we can how we can perform and to be able to do it that well over a medium like this, it's so cool. And you know, hopefully that's a nice taste of what people can get from your live stream. And uh, actually, somebody in the chat was asking, where can people go to watch your live stream on Wednesday and Saturday? I usually do it on my uh, Facebook account, so if they look for my name and make friends with me. <laughs> okay. And, I, and we usually do it uh, Wednesdays at 4 Eastern Standard and Saturdays at 5 Eastern Standard. Okay, great. Uh, so, Monica, one of the reasons that we really love you uh, is that you're a hero to women in music everywhere. Uh, you've done so much to highlight women of all ages in jazz. Um, and I wanted to ask, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Jazz Girls okay. Day? Yeah, I, w I was just reminiscing because it pretty much actually a year ago we were in, in Egypt and Germany on, on that tour and we did Jazz Girls Day in Frankfurt pretty much exactly a year ago. And so this is a concept that started at Berkeley High School. Um, Sarah Klein, who teaches out there, she came up with the initial idea. And the, the purpose is, you know, to bring together the girls in an environment where they're not inhibited because um, a few things that have been really important to foster more involvement is a role models and those safe environments. You know, one thing we do is when we teach improvisation, it's usually in middle school, right when all the girls get in puberty. <laughs> And the worst thing you can ask them is to stand up in front of the class and, and try something that's risky where they could not look perfect, <laughs> like improvising. And, and so there's a real problem with um, getting behind it already at that point. And um, also just in, in, in terms of role models, you know, it's the further you get, the fewer you see. So it's this... Uh, tokenism and saying, well, you know, you're something special, but it's not the norm. So the idea of these Jazz Girls Days is to get together all the girls in um, ages 10 to 18, and we put them together in combos, and they play, and we put them on stage, and we just did the last one on March 7. It was part of our CD release party here in Bloomington, and we had about 30 girls. We had four combos. There was uh, the littlest ones were eight, a little eight, seven year old actually, and a ten year old, and and it was just really special. And I got all these thank yous afterwards for them saying, you know, how much it meant for them to to be able to do that and to get together. And I've seen it; it's it's all over the country by now. Um, and we'll do it next year again, also in, in, in Germany, there's another one planned. So it's, it's a growing movement and it's really, really important because it, it grows things from the roots and not bottom down. Yeah. Incredible and lots of, lots of thumbs ups and likes Very to, to everything you were just talking about that's really empowering to, to young women of all ages. And I was wondering if next you could tell us a little bit about your project Shiro's and how that all came about. So, yeah, so I have two of them here, <laughs> the last two to show. So this one is the one that we just released um, on that March 7 and that tour that we uh, stopped, but it's on the radio. And so the musicians, there's Lainey Stern on the guitar, um, Rehud Regev, great trombonist, Jamie Baum on the flute. Um, on this one, actually, Lakisha Benjamin is also on saxophone. 
um, Jennifer Vincent on the bass, Rosa Avila on the drums, just really, really, really great players. And I started this six years ago. I just pulled, you know, I'm realizing that there's just a real need to showcase, to, to, to change uh, how we perceive things on stage. You know, it, it happens to me all the time. I <clears throat> come on stage and, and the first thing people say is, oh, you're going to sing for us today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, well, I'm not sure you want me to. <laughs> 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 but meaning it's, it's just that perception, you know, uh, being <laughs> the stage, it's obviously the singer of the band. And um, so it's, it's, we don't associate certain instruments and certain looks together. So one of the real important elements of this band is, is to put this on a stage and put this on, on large stages and, and prominent stages with the best players I can find. I mean, these are all amazing women and I'm happy they play with me. <laughs> and, and, put a really great show together and, and little by little change this perception of, you know, coming in and, oh yeah, this is going to be cute. But, you know, other than that, we don't know kind of, kind of thing. And I, and I can tell you, it's still there. Um, I played the Indie Jazz Fest uh, last September and I played, it was great and get off the stage and this guy comes up to me and he says, oh, it was wonderful, sounded amazing. And he said, you know, I, I really didn't expect that. You look more like a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and my heart just sang. It was like, you know, but what did you expect then from me? Mm. <laughs> you know, so, so this, this is the, the hurdles and the, the perceptions we're trying to, to change with that. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes people think, why would you try to put like all female groups then on the stage and you know do the opposite and and i think it's just really important to go and change the whole look around and be persistent for a minute until we just don't have to think about it anymore and becomes the new normal there's a balance that needs to be shifted there for sure and your team is is a bunch of superheroes. These musicians are incredible. Yeah. And for anybody to listen to them and and say, oh, well, I didn't expect that. Well, guess what? You can expect it from now on. We had the pleasure of hearing Shiro's uh, at uh, at um, was the new school in New York City. And uh, I believe that was, that was a little bit early on in the project. And it was already sounding absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that, that was uh, for the release of, of this one. Yes. We did that, and, and yeah, and, and this album turned out real, really successful. It stayed on the Jazz Weeks charts for like 15 weeks, and was one of the best of 2018 and downbeat, so yay. <laughs> highly, highly recommended. Well, I put some of the, the album covers up during the broadcast so people can get a look for those, but do... Do get out there and, and buy those albums and find, find you on tour, you know, once this is all over. Uh, do you have any any highlights, any favorite places that you traveled recently? I know you mentioned uh, uh, Egypt was a highlight, and I saw some of those pictures on your website. I think that that whole tour, which was exactly one year ago, you know, if I never, ever get to do anything again, <laughs> this is the thing to put on my tombstone. Wow. It, it, was, it was just really special. I mean, we took this group. And we went to this uh, festival, Jazz Tales Festival in Egypt, and um, it's actually a, a female who organized this all. And you know, in Egypt, unfortunately, is still really low on women's rights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for them, it was a really big step to to do that and, and have us there. And and we had a very large crowd. And we collaborated with a group from there who was also led by, by a female. And it, it was just really, really, really special on stage. Wow. <laughs> and it was really interesting, you know, behind stage, you know, some of the stage hands, you know, for them, it, it, it was a different concept. And, and they had to question us a lot. And are your husbands okay with <laughs> you? Are you proud of you? 
<laughs> we had to explain to them that it's just fine with them. It's all good. <laughs> oh, wow. Amazing. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, over the past year, you overcame uh, some very serious health setbacks. And we really admire your courage and your resolve. And we are really glad that you're back in action. But uh, I wanted to ask if, if during some of the, the, the darker times during that, did it affect you musically? Well, I think actually music got me through, you know, so, so I went through a breast cancer treatment and it's a very, unfortunately, a very common thing. A lot of um, women are affected from it. And, you know, one thing that I think made it possible for me, I, I, I didn't stop. I kept writing music and performing because... You know, it's not that you're decapacitated, you just have treatment and, and you work on it, but there's nothing wrong with your fingers and mm. with your mind. <laughs> and and so it helped me a lot. You know, I, I kept writing. I went, that's this one October tour that we did. I think we, we met up at the airport, remember? Mm -hmm. Yep, I remember. <laughs> and, and, and the rental car that was right in the thick of things. <laughs> and, and you know, it, it helped me get through and not stop and, and not say, oof, I, I cannot do this or I cannot do this. I, I could, and, and and it helped me. And, and a lot of the music on on this Eternal Dance, um, A, came out of it, but unfortunately also was written for some of the people that we lost in the same process. You know, Jerry Allen, the great jazz pianist, she uh, passed away three years ago. She's also a birthday buddy of chicken mine. <laughs> happened, mm. so I dedicated one piece for her. It's on her birthday. Also, uh, Peter's brother actually passed away last August from lung cancer. So it's it affects a lot of us. So my hope was by putting the music together that there's a way of, of overcoming and, and, and courage and, you know, moral support. Oh. Great message and so happy to hear that, that you're doing better. Really inspirational. Hair. Yes. <laughs> and your hair. You know, when I when I saw you at the airport, I didn't know what was going on, but I did notice you had a short new do. <laughs> short <laughs> <laughs> well it's perfect for summertime come on it's yes perfect <laughs> yeah peter did it perfect <laughs> <laughs> uh i also wanted to ask you're a you're a big part of the jazz education network uh as head of the research committee and i wanted to ask how did that relationship come to be um so this is the organization that came kind of out ashes of the International Association of Jazz Education, IHAE, that went bankrupt um, about 15 years ago. And some of the leaders decided we need to keep this going. We need to make sure there's a strong jazz organization. So I, I came in pretty early at the beginning and joined the board. And during the board meetings, you know, we realized that there was always a lot of um, the performances and the clinics at the conferences, but uh, some of the research was usually the thing in the dark room at the end of the hallway with two people in there. <laughs> and, and, you know, I thought there's, there's a really strong connection. I mean, research just meaning how can we learn to do things better that we do. And so I, I took it on me to start the, the research arm of the organization and the committee. <clears throat> and so we have a, a track at the conference. There's about 40 presentations. And we just started a journal, um, working on the second edition. So call out is still open. It's called Jazz Education in Research and Practice, or Jazz. <laughs> And it's through IU Press. So um, submissions are open till May. And we'd love to have a lot of good writings, all kinds of different types from reviews to case studies to bigger studies. And um, we also have a, a fellowship 
uh, it's a project, so anybody who wants to attempt a research project and use the resources at the Smithsonian, there's a $5,000 fellowship that applications are every year. So it's 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 been great to <clears throat> see this grow and and see how we <clears throat> can grow this community. Wow, very very great. Well, uh, we've been making you talk for so long. I, I was thinking maybe we could maybe we could wrap up more. with uh, with one song. But uh, yeah, what's just just to remind everybody, what's the best way to keep up with you? <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully my website. Oh right, yes. At, at Don't go on the website quite yet. Well, we've we've been hacked. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is another interesting thing of this whole thing. I've been seeing so much more phishing, hacking. I had somebody open up a Spotify account on my credit card. You know, it's people. Oh, that's terrible. People empowered by not being seen, and it's kind of the dark side of. <laughs> of staying home so but hopefully how is the website doing <laughs> looks like it's up looks like it's, it's good up. cool yeah poor peter has been going through the files and he has to find the virus and get it out and <laughs> get it back up but it should be right now good yeah so there there's a mailing list sign up on the website um on the monicahersick.com and feel free to contact me also on, on facebook and I'll, I'll respond and I'll find you. I'll send out a monthly newsletter with all the things coming up and with some news items and with some of these call outs that I've been talking about. So that's helpful too. Yeah, the website is working. I've got it up here on the screen. So people can check that out and they can see you've got a shop up there, you've got your music up there, and hopefully, yeah. hopefully soon tour information, right? Even yes. This show, baby, right? This this oh. album is really special. It's um, it's it has some tracks with Bob Burke. This is our Time Flies LP. Wow. And some lost tracks. So cool stuff on on that website. Very <laughs> cool. Awesome. You know, Mike just just reminded me with the the tour post being postponed. I wanted to ask, are you planning to continue the tour when you can? Well, I mean. I know at least one of the dates has been rescheduled for October 30th. Okay. So hopefully, I mean, it's, it, it keeps pushing up, as I said. So we were going to do the Vienna Jazz Festival on July 8th. But that has just been canceled. We're officially still scheduled for the um, Canary Islands Jazz Festival on July 10, 11. We'll see. So Who knows? So right now it looks like October is the next safe bet, and then um, the other things probably next March. But it's it's well, it's tricky. We we just don't know if we ever go back into that right. same mode or how our interactions going to look like. You know? mm. yeah. No, fingers crossed. So what what yes. are you you and Peter going to play for us next? <laughs> So we're gonna do a guitar special. <laughs> but the thing is, oh big wow, kid. yay! So we did, nice. We, we did to Korea's big hit, and now we'll, we'll attempt um, face dance. Pet with these face dance. All right, very cool. And and I'm gonna do a little Rick Wakeman trick at the end, play the piano and the keyboard at the same time if I can manage. We have faith in you. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, you wanna go that off? Some chords. Tuning this this tune is called tuning. Oh it is? Thank you. 
Great stuff, guys. That's one of my favorite songs. Yay. Oh, love it. Classic. <laughs> yep. So, Monica, I have to mention, um, you know, when, when Lyle Mays passed away back in February, you know, he always used that, that classic Oberheim square wave kind of lead sound. I made a version for the PX560 that you can load in. So I'll email it over to you, but just for anybody watching, uh, you can get it from the Casio Music Forums.com website. It's right at the top of the PX560 page called Lyle's Lead. So it's wow. a great sound. So anytime, next time when you're covering that tune, you'll, you'll have exactly the right lead sound to go in there. This, this one is pretty close, too. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Not bad. Mike's got the perfect one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, lots lots of thumbs ups and likes. So thanks everybody for watching. That was great. And thanks Peter as well. Yes, Peter. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, in closing, again, Monica, thank you so much for joining us today on this artist spotlight. We we will keep track of of everything that you're doing and uh, look for your, your live streams coming up on Facebook. Uh, you said Wednesday and Saturday? So we will actually go live right after this for, for an hour for my uh, page and we'll keep playing some more. Hits. Oh. oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, and, and Saturdays at, at 5. Yeah, I feel so weird on Saturdays being home and not playing, so <laughs> you gotta yeah. do Saturdays. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, fantastic. We'll, we'll, we'll share your stream as soon as we're done here, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, on behalf of Casio, thank you, everybody, for joining us here today, and we'll see you same time tomorrow for our next live stream tomorrow with uh, jazz pianist Jax Pax Josh Paxton, if I can get that out. So see you, everybody, tomorrow. And thanks, Monica. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. All right. Thanks Bye, so everybody. Much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>